Chapter 2 And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it, and put frankincense thereon. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons the priests, and he shall take thereout his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened, mingled with oil. Thou shalt part it in pieces, and pour oil thereon. It is a meat offering. And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof, and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven, for ye shall burn no leaven, nor any honey, in any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savour. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. And if thou offer a meat offering of thy first fruits unto the Lord, thou shalt offer for the meat offering of thy first fruits green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. And thou shalt put oil upon it, and lay frankincense thereon. It is a meat offering. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of the beaten corn thereof, and part of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Chapter 2 For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome, as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins all way. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart, 
endeavoured the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and we honor and glorify your worthy name for another opportunity to spend time with you. Thank you, dear Lord, that you are a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and of great kindness, keeping mercy unto thousands, and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Cleanse us, Lord, wash us in your precious blood once again, and then, Lord, baptize us anew with power from on high. Thank you for your word today. And thank you, Lord, for reminding us of so many matters in our lives as we live from day to day. And so, Father, we ask now that you will give us the strength to rise above discouragement and unfair and unjust bad treatment from people. Give us the inner strength to rise above discouragement and unfair and unjust bad treatment from people. You reminded us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2 that the apostles were treated badly at Philippi. They testified, but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention or conflict. In Acts chapter 16, verses 12, 22, 23, and 24, the apostles were beaten and placed in jail simply for preaching the gospel. But instead of being discouraged, they gathered strength and continued preaching the gospel continue their work of ministry. So help us, dear Lord, when we face similar unjust treatment, to put the situation in your hands and to ask you to take care of it. Like what Job did when his friends came to accuse him of committing sin. That's why his troubles had come upon him. Job declared in Job chapter 16, verse 19 and 20, he says, also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. My friends scorn me, but mine eyes poureth out tears unto God. Job kept his focus on God. Help us like the Hebrew youth in Daniel to put our case in your hands. They said, King, we will not bow to your idols. Our God whom we serve is able to, de to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Help us to do like David, to encourage ourselves in the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, the people wanted to stone David because they came home from wherever they were and discovered that the enemy had entered the city and taken captives, their children and their wives and their spouses. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. So help us, Lord, when we face tough times, to encourage ourselves in you with songs of praise and and talking with you in prayer and we will receive strength to rise above unjust treatment and discouraging situations help us also lord to be diligent workers and to seek by our labors to be independent and with your help to take care of our needs Help us to be diligent workers and to seek by our labors to be independent and with your help to take care of our needs. The apostles mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. The Apostle Paul, according to Acts 18.3, was a tent maker. And just so that nobody would be able to say that they are preaching the gospel for money or earthly gain, they worked night and day at the trade of being tent makers so that they would not 
be dependent on any person for their daily sustenance. So help us, dear Lord, to follow likewise and not depend merely on government handouts and uh, help from others, but to work diligently to take care of our needs. To remember your commands, you said, Lord, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 9, you said, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Then you counseled us in Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So help us, Lord, to work diligently, whether we have a kitchen garden, whether we are carpenter, or whether we burn coals, or we wear poultry, fowls, whether we drive taxi or whether we engage in large-scale farming, help us, Lord, to do our best at our work so that we can be independent. And then, Lord, help us to cherish the Bible as the word of the living God, as God's love letter to us. The apostles mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, they said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So help us, dear Lord, to cherish this word and to cherish the counsel in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and verse 16, where the Apostle Paul, under inspiration, says to Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness so help us lord to cherish this bible as your your map to show us the path to eternal life as a guide to tell us what is right and what is wrong when we read it prayerfully and with the guidance of the holy spirit help us dear lord to read your word so that our faith could remain strong and be strengthened and as we go through this week lord and as we go through this day may our prayer be May our prayer be, give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest toss. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. May our prayer be, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. And Father, when that day comes, when night shall vanish into eternal day, when you will burst the clouds and come, burst the clouds and descend through the azure skies to take your children home, may we be one of those who will lift our hands to heaven and say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Take us through this day and this week with your presence. And bless, Lord, those who have placed their request in your hand. Lord, please answer them this week. Answer them this day according to your divine will. And we will remember to give you the praise, the glory, and the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.